How's it going everyone? I'm Adam Molina. So you read the title of the video, so you know why we're here. What makes a phone great at audio? Not good, great. What makes it the best? And no, we're not talking about blind listening tests or YouTube recording comparisons. Which are complete bull anyway. You can actually prove which phones are best at audio. Sure, there's some level of subjectivity to how we perceive sound as humans, but audio is physics, not magic. There's some key objective things that we can point to and say, okay, this phone is better than this phone. But what are they? Let's find out. So let's start with the obvious. Smartphone speakers suck. Like, really bad. So what determines the best phone for audio isn't going to be how well it blasts music when you're listening to it on the subway. It's easy for us to say that they're bad, but it's important to remember that they don't suck because they're poorly made. They suck because of physics. It's just hard to get something so small to sound good with such little power. Think of the smallest, decent sounding speaker you've ever heard. And now imagine trying to squeeze that into something the size of a smartphone. Several companies like Dirac are trying to make the most of a bad situation by implementing some psychoacoustic trickery to make bass sound better. But the problem remains that smartphone speakers simply aren't capable of doing a good job currently. To be frank, speakers are also kind of hard to test for, because the way that something sounds in perfect ideal lab conditions doesn't really translate to the real world, as I'm sure your bedroom, like mine, isn't an anechoic chamber. Other sounds from the outside world will drown out or mask notes of similar frequencies meaning that you won't be able to hear everything coming out of the speakers. If your speakers can't overpower outside noise, then you can't hear it. Let's look at the LG V35, for example. At an average sound pressure level of 72 decibels at max volume, it has some significant issues with sound quality because many of the most important notes are one half to a quarter as loud. Because of this, it's far harder to hear them when there's any sort of noise around you. Let's look at some examples here. Focus on the music, not the noise. Doesn't really sound good, does it? Weak speakers that can't overpower outside noise just fall flat. Even the best smartphones struggle here. So if the speakers aren't much to write home about, how does a phone stand out from the crowd? How does it set itself apart? Well, one way that phones do that is with the features they offer. For example, if you really want the best smartphone for audio, then you need a headphone jack. Most people like boosted bass, and a lot of consumer headphones give you just that. It's not coming from the phone, it's your headphones. If your music sounds bad, the bottleneck is your headphones, 99 times out of 100. That's also why so many people are adamant about keeping the headphone jack. There's a lot of really good headphones out there that use the 3.5 millimeter plug, and they're often a lot cheaper than the Bluetooth cans. If you're gonna limit what your phone can connect with, you need good options to use the connection standards that you have. And at the moment, there's far more really great headphones and in-ears with wires than there are with Bluetooth or USB-C headphones. Maybe that'll change in the future, but for right now, the best audio experience comes from a 3.5 millimeter connection. Even USB-C headphones, which should have offered a better experience than the 100 euro TRRS tech, don't really have any high quality or even good options. Trust us, just Google USB-C headphones. USB-C headphones also seem to be slowing down on releases as well, just because no one's really buying them. People are finding compatibility issues even within the same brands. The OnePlus USB-C earbuds, for example, work perfectly fine with the 6T, but not with the older 5T. That's not great. Where the headphone jack works on just about everything, USB-C just doesn't, and that's even true of the dongles. There's not a single dongle that works on every smartphone, and that's a problem. Now, if you plan on using Bluetooth headphones, then the next thing you should be aware of are the Bluetooth codecs. Luckily, most newer Android phones have many of them baked into the OS, like AptX, AptX HD, AAC, and Sony's LDAC. Unfortunately, they don't all work as they're supposed to, especially AAC, which just isn't up to snuff on Android devices. Though, to be fair, it does work fine on iOS devices. And each connection will add varying amounts of noise that usually isn't very audible. However, Bluetooth can sometimes mean intermittent disconnects, no music when the battery runs out, and limited bandwidth issues. 
Lastly, there's the extra audio stuff that isn't really a huge deal, but just nice to have. An example of a random audio perk you might want to consider is something like Dolby Atmos support, which might be important if you plan on watching a lot of video on your phone. If you want to take it a step further, then you might also want the better built-in DAC or internal amplifier in order to adequately power some higher impedance headphones. Okay, so after all that, let's prove ourselves a bit. We can tell just exactly how good or bad each phone can read a music file, process it, and output a signal by measuring it. Ideally, the phone wouldn't change anything at all from the original recording. Making this note higher than that note, adding distortion, you get the idea. In general, we're looking for any errors that you could possibly hear, like low dynamic range, high noise, or frequency response deviations over two decibels. So we use a pretty simple setup to test the phone's physical output port, whether that's a 3.5 millimeter audio jack or a USB-C port and dongle. While there's lots of little variations sometimes, usually it's so minor that you'd never know it was there. Bluetooth, on the other hand, does sometimes have audible errors, but we encourage you to check out our huge article linked below on the subject. Basically, Bluetooth connections aren't as stable as a wire, and sometimes that can mean audible issues. Last year, we found that some codecs will present some noise where it shouldn't even exist even in ideal conditions where lots of other devices aren't interfering with your signal. See all of that noise above the dotted red line? Yeah, not good. This isn't a problem on Wired. If you're on Android, you'll probably want to stick to Aptex HD or LDAC at 660 kbps, neither of which technically provides as good quality as a wired connection, but you'd never know unless you have absolutely perfect youthful ears. If audio is important to you, then the best smartphone for audio is basically one, any phone with a headphone jack, two, any phone that can power your wired headphones if you have any, and three, a phone with speakers that can get loud, even if they suck. The technical differences between phones are too minute to make any real world differences. So as long as the phone you pick has those three pillars, then you're golden. And that pretty much does it. Thanks for watching and make sure to hit up the description for links to all of our deep dives on the subject. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already and also follow us on the socials for any and all Android related news and reviews because we are your source for all things Android.